Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Look, at, I, I'm, I'm ready better this morning. I put a, a tablecloth over my window so we don't have a glow around Audrey's head. Now we'll just have one on the side of my head as I'm fluttering around here doing whatever she tells me to do. So, welcome to our special edition of Dream Pie with my special guest, Audrey, this morning. And you know we're sisters because she arrived here this morning and we're wearing the same color. And we do not send each other memos. We do this all the time. It, it gets to be kind of funny. So sometimes it's the exact same shirt because we do have some clothes that are exactly the same. Because we shop the same places and we like the same things. So we lots of times end up with very similar or same Good clothes. Good morning, I brought those my <laughs> We have a, a uh, helper on the tech end of things this morning. Taylor's not here, but Zachary is here. And he is going to be relaying questions that you send via the messaging there on the bottom of the screen. So if you are just, you've been just dying to ask questions of Audrey, <laughs> she's here today. You could ask the questions and then we'll get some answers on things. It's going to be a very short video. <laughs> Who knows what you're going to learn today? So, good morning to Sharon. Oh, look at the Taylor's there. Oh, maybe Tassie too, unless they're not sharing the same poem. So, we're making dream pie. Now, we need to tell you the story of why we call this dream pie. The reason that it's called dream pie is because we had a special guest come join us for pie one evening or afternoon, whatever, they came to join us for pie, and I had made cherry pie, and Audrey had made this blueberry cloud pie. And this individual put a piece of each on his, on his plate, and we were laughing about it, and he loves cherry pie, and he, lo and he loved this new pie, so he said the combination of them was like a dream. And it became ever more dream pie. So Audrey's adjusted the recipe a little bit, and it's now dream pie that's what we call it so here we go with dream pie and um it's really simple actually i i am i've never made it before but audrey is the expert at this so we're just going to do whatever she says to do and it's going to be fabulous i'm sure good morning mary how can you see that <laughs> She's wondering how I can see that. Well, I can see just enough so that I can see the names of people, but I can't see questions or comments. So um, it's not because I have really good eyesight or anything, because I definitely don't. But welcome here this morning to Dream Pie. So you're going to start with a pre-baked pie shell in your pan. Oh, you could do jello prep first. Oh, Take see? Time. She's the expert. Good morning, Ulrika. Okay, so you have to do this ahead of time, otherwise you're not going to be able to do this recipe. You have to get a box of Jello, like this blue Jello. It's the little four serving or 85 gram package of Jello. This one's called Berry Blue. This is what you need to make the blue pie to match the blueberries. So you need this, and you need to make this up full recipe. Half a cup of hot water, half a cup of cold. Half a cup of hot water, half a cup of cold. And you need to put this on the side so that it will chill slightly. Because if it's just watery or warm, it's not going to work. So you want it to look like this. So you want it to be starting to set. So it's moving around still. But it's like a jelly. Like a jelly. Like, like a loose jelly, I think. Very loose jelly. You don't want it to be set. You want it to be... If it gets too thick, then you end up with lumps of jello in your pie. I mean, it looks pretty. You can eat it, but if you want that kind, you can. So... You want lumps of blueberry jello in your pie? Let it set up a little bit more. If you don't, don't let it set up too hard. Make sure that it's a little bit loose, like a loose jelly. So you want to make that up ahead of time. It's a small amount, so it's not like you have to make it up two hours or something ahead of time. It's not, it's not going to take that long to start setting that up. If your house is really hot, then just pop it in the fridge and give it a stir and just keep checking it every five minutes or so to, to make sure that it's getting to the right consistency for you. So you need to have that set up previously. So the next thing is pie shell and you have some options. So you can use regular pie crust if you want and 
that's usually what Audrey and I use mostly because it works for us. But you can also make a rice crispy pie crust in the bottom of your pan. And you can use that. The issue with that, I think is what we found, is that when you put it in the fridge, because this pie has to be kept in the fridge because of the whipped cream, that the rice crispy stuff gets really hard. Not really hard. No, it's still, you can't put as many rice krispies when you mix your marshmallow because then it gets hard. But so you want to make it so if that you're going to eat it the same day, it's good. So it it just it's just a little bit more difficult to cut. And if you if you're not really careful to not put over um, overload your recipe with with the rice krispies, then it will get harder. And then when you're trying to slice this pie, you're going to have issues with that. So. You want to make sure that it's not, um, it's still quite, it's quite squishy. Lots of marshmallow in it so that you can actually slice it. So, good morning, Aaliyah. The queen of sourdough, amazing thing. She did one with rose petals. Oh my goodness gracious, it looks stunning. Absolutely stunning. Okay, so we have the pie crust and we have the jello that has been set up just a little bit so that it's kind of like a, a loose jelly any more than it'll be it won't mix up with the whipped cream and it'll be little globs of the jello in there all right now what do we do next beet whipping cream you need real whipping cream I have it in the thing on there. and you need i guess i should two cups two cups you need two cups of the heavy whipping cream and you're going to put that into your mixer and you're going to add or have some sitting on the side. You'll need to have the sitting on the side. You need five tablespoons of icing sugar, confectionery sugar. It's pretty close to a half a cup of it. And sometimes it's been forgotten to put a difference because the jello is sweet and has enough sugar in it. Good morning, Ramona. It has lots of sugar in it from the jello. So if you happen to forget, it's not going to be the worst. Audrey has done it and the people that were eating it had no idea that they weren't eating it with sugar in it. So there you go. Could be optional. You decide. The icing sugar does help your whipping cream to um, set up though nicely and hold together. So that there's that there's, there's a two there's two reasons why you would have icing sugar in your whipping cream. So we're going to do that now. We're going to whip Whipping cream. I'm supposed to be doing that, but she won't talk, so I end up doing all the talking. All right. So, dream pie is what we're doing here. The nice thing about this pie is that it's cool and it looks absolutely beautiful. So, on a hot summer day, or if you're doing a barbecue and if you're doing it outside you want something spectacular looking without doing boatloads of work and sweating profusely in your kitchen you can make this pie and it just it looks absolutely amazing so you do need fresh blueberries so hopefully your grocery store has enough fresh produce and decent quality that you can actually do something with it so so we've made up the jello ahead of time we have our pie crust, Audrey's whipping the cream, and then after it's beat up so that it's fluffy, then she's going to start to add in this icing sugar. So, any questions that you just are dying to ask Audrey? I already answered why we're sisters, we wear the same color. There have been times we've had our hair, hair fairly similar, <laughs> and people's looks on their faces when they're when we're at the shop looking at us. They they suspect that we're sisters, but they're not one hundred percent sure. So eventually, by the end of the conversation, they'll say, "So are you guys sisters?" And then we say, "Yeah," and then they're like, "Oh, okay, yeah." Kind of look like you're sisters, but we weren't one hundred percent sure. So yes, we wore the same color, and we did not send a memo to each other. The other thing that you can do while your cream is whipping, or you can do it ahead of time so that you're prepared for it, is wash your blueberries and dry them. 
you don't want all that excess moisture to be in your in your um, recipe because it'll make it sloppy so wash your blueberries and you're going to dry them out so you can just do it on a paper towel and you're going to need one and two thirds cups or two or cups whatever you want, whatever you, want. You, you can put as many blueberries as you want in there, more the merrier. I think. <laughs> How do you says the more, more the merrier. Okay, so yeah, she's got pretty close to, I think, more than two cups here. And fresh blueberries, you can't go wrong with them. So you wanna beat the cream too long or you make butter. Yes, don't beat your cream too long. I've done it before and then I just say, oh, okay, I guess I'm having butter now because yeah, it will turn to butter. So you wanna whip it so that it's nice and fluffy. But definitely watch it so that you don't over whip it because then it gets, uh, it will turn to butter. It will start to get little curdles in it. And that means it's moving into the butter stage. So, too bad when we were growing up, we didn't have electricity and stuff like this. We could have made butter much easier. We did the whole hand crank thing. So, I remember being quite young and we would, mom would put us on the floor. We didn't have toys, so we, we made butter. <laughs> Mom had a square jug, jug that was about this big that had a turning thing on it. And <laughs> we would sit on the floor and we would put the, the jar with the cream in between our legs and then we would crank. And I don't, I'm thinking we must have been slightly entertained by it because we did it very regularly. Question? Okay, question, Zachary. Let me get asked. Do you add sugar all at once or a little at a time? All at once. There you go. Add your sugar all at once. It's beaten out, soft, so it's just nice and fluffy and fluffy and poofy. Okay. And now we're gonna add the Jello. <laughs> so you can see it's starting to set really fast. It's set up pretty good. That's the thing with a metal bowl. Lots of times we'll help it really set up quickly. And you want to fold it because it's folded in. Okay. Fold in the jello into that pie crust. So you're not whipping it in, and that's why if you have your jello overset, then you're going to end up with lumps in it because you're not beating it, you're not whisking it, you're folding the jello into that whipped cream. A good consistency is like that Rogers golden syrup. It's really thick syrup. Rogers golden syrup. That's what you. That's the consistency that you're looking for in that in that jello. If it's too watery, gonna... it'll kill your cream, but you want it to have thick enough. So you get to play with it and figure out exactly what's gonna work the best for you. So the consistency of about Roger's golden syrup is when you wanna have that set up, the jello set up too. And then Audrey's fold that into the whipped cream. So you get it nice blue color, pale blue color. Just don't beat it. So you can mix it, you just don't want to beat it. Because if you beat it, then you're going to kill your whipped cream and then it's not going to be as, a, as fluffy of a, of a pie. It won't be a cloud, it'll be a soup. It'll be soup. Blueberry soup pie. <laughs> Thanks. I don't want to beat it anymore. Nope, looks good. Looks good. So there's a few flecks of blue in it, but you know what? It looks pretty. It looks pretty. And when you put the blueberries in it, you're all good I'm to go. I'm fold the blueberries in. Okay. Now, you're going to take your blueberries that have been washed I found a stem and dried and de-stemmed because they always leave a few stems in there. I don't know, I think they just think you need a little bit of extra fiber or something. But they just double Whoever check finds them. a stem in this pie wins a prize. <laughs> extra piece of pie. Oh, well, there you go. So you want to eat this pie and find a stem, then you get an extra piece of pie. <laughs> Morning, Joy Lynn. <laughs> oh, goodness. There we go. There, the berries have been checked. Now Audrey is folding them into that whipping cream and jello mixture. Okay. 
and she's done. I'm done. This is the shortest pie making video ever. <laughs> okay, see, it's just beautiful. So it just falls lovely into that pie crust, and you can see that it's got a, a nice mound to it, so it's holding up very well. It's not totally crashed. And you'll see that my pie crust is not heaped up over the edge of my pie. That's because the blueberry stuff is the best part. So why would I have that in there? I don't, I'm, not, I'm not an artist. So. There we go. So she's got this done in there. Now, if you want to make it pretty, you have a couple of options. You can, you can pipe some whipped cream on top of it if you want to do it fancier. Or you can just sprinkle fresh blueberries onto the top of the pie just because you can never have too many blueberries, fresh blueberries on this pie. There. So it's just put in there and the pie is done. You put it in your fridge and let it set up really good. How long would it take? Two hours? Hour. About an hour it'll be set up. So you don't even need to make it like way in advance or anything. So is that not the fastest, coolest, prettiest looking pie that you've ever seen. So it's only one crust, so if you don't want to fiddle around with pie dough, you can just go get a tender flake one from the store, and you can bake that one up. Good morning, Kim. You can bake that one up, and you can use that as the base for your pie, or you can do the Rice crispy one, so you make like a pan of Rice Krispies. You obviously won't need, I don't think you'll need the whole recipe, because I think it makes a 9 by 13 there. Because you'll be using... Oh, do, do, do. How many Rice Krispies? Two and a half cups of Rice Krispies. So and marshmallows. And then you need your marshmallows. So you're gonna follow the recipe that's that's on the box for doing your Rice Krispie squares. And you put there's probably with that recipe you probably have enough for two. And then no, that's not right. Two and a half cups of, of one and a quarter cups of marshmallows and butter. Two and a half cups of Rice Krispies. You want to write it down and you want to do the Rice Krispie crust. Otherwise you'll have a hard crust, so you have to follow that recipe. So two and a half cups of Rice Krispies, if you want to make the Rice Krispie crust. And then you're going to melt your three tablespoons of butter. And then add in one and a quarter cups of miniature marshmallows. Melt that together. Mix your Rice Krispies in there. Press that into your uh, pie pan. I would probably put a little bit of... Um, I'd put a little bit of butter, I think, on there, um, on your pan, so that just in case it decides it's going to stick, because you don't want to be trying to to manhandle that piece of pie out of your pie shell when you when you've got this all kind of put together and going on there. So, rice crispy crust or regular crust. Then you're going to take your one package of Jello, mix that up, half a cup of hot water, half a cup of cold water. And let that sit so that it starts to get set up. So you want it to be about the thickness of Roger's Golden Syrup. That's Audrey's tip. Roger's Golden Syrup. That's about how thick you want that. And you're going to let that start to set up. Then you're going to beat up two, two, cups, cups. two cups of heavy whipping cream. And once the clouds, <coughs> of it, it starts to make nice poofy clouds in your bowl. Then you're going to add one half of a cup or five tablespoons of icing sugar that helps to helps the whipping cream to set up and then just adds a little bit more sweetness um, some blueberries are super sweet some of them are not super sweet so a heavy when we say heavy whipping cream this is what we're talking about 35. it's 35 percent whipping cream that you're going to be using for this pie okay so that's what the pie looks like so yes yeah, so you mix your whipping cream with your with icing sugar. sugar don't don't over whip it or you're going to make butter. Then you're going to fold in that Roger's Golden Syrup consistency of the Jello. You're going to fold that in there so it's nicely incorporated. And then you're going to fold in your one, one and two thirds to two cups of fresh blueberries that you've washed and dried. So you don't want to put them in there wet. Fold them in wet. there. And... I mean, it can be a little bit dry. You just want to pat them dry. You just don't want to have excess moisture. So um, you don't have to individually dry each blueberry. 
unless you just totally want to you can do that but you know you don't have to do that okay so you're going to do that then you're going to just pour and it just kind of oozes into your into your pie shell and you want to leave it nice and puffed up and you can decorate the top with extra whipped cream and fresh blueberries or just fresh blueberries and it'll set up in about an hour pop it in your fridge and it slices amazingly well like super well it'll just it just slices just beautifully right through use a, sh a really nice sharp knife and it will slice through your blueberries beautifully too because these are store-bought blueberry like tame blueberries so they're a little bit bigger a wild blueberry would it might be a little bit more challenging to get that slice see. through can't see oh uh mary duke says what flavor jello this is berry blue so it's the blue box can you see it behind my behind my shirt here yeah this one is called this is called berry blue because you want that blue color not supposed to match the blueberries so and it ends up this being a pale pale blue it doesn't end up being as bright as the jello is for sure it's just a perfect for Canada Day tomorrow yeah and if you wanted to you could or July 4th you could make a bread yeah, pie you with it you've got some you've got some Americans in your family so Paula Paula I'm not I don't think you're watching morning Kim to make strawberry pie and this one you could make strawberry pie and you can make this one and you have the two things red and blue mixed together and white cooking cream and I, I'm thinking if you did this with red jello and you put strawberries in there you can make a red one i don't i don't see why it wouldn't work gongs are not juicy if your strawberries are super soggy juicy it might not work but you know what sets up slice it eat it and then you don't have to worry about it juicing out and doing all kinds of uh, things so yeah you could make this for canada day you have time to go to the grocery store and you could make this for canada day or you could try a strawberry one Send us a picture so we can see what the pie looks like. It will inspire us to try something new and amazing. So we're going to eat this tomorrow. <laughs> it's going in the fridge and we will be eating it tomorrow when we do up a, a steak and a pork chop and a couple other things that go with it. We are not going to just sit down and just eat straight up pie. I know sometimes it looks like I just sit and eat pie all day, but that's not what I do. <laughs> in fact today i'm going to make strawberry jam i'm going to make cherry pies i have to clean my gazebo because it looks like a disaster and there's six million spider webs out there and i need to vacuum my floors and wash them and um in, pre in preparation in case <laughs> in case we end up eating inside the house so we're going to make strawberry pie and dig potatoes there you go obviously digging potatoes We'll see. Has anybody got potatoes growing in their garden already? I'm thinking, Mary, do you have a garden? Sharon? I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know that I asked her if I saw pictures that you posted. Happy birthday to Marla! Marla's I'm, birthday's today. Marla Willier. I don't know if you're watching or not. I didn't notice if you were, if your name popped up there. But if you are, happy birthday to us. Oh, Audrey says we're going to sing. Oh, dear. Now yeah. we're kicking it up a notch to the scary part. <laughs> okay, because I don't want you to ask me to do another video. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. This is the craziest thing ever. Which one? Which one? Good comment. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marla. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Finish on a good note. I couldn't get the notes before then. <laughs> Happy birthday from Zachary, too. <laughs> oh, gracious. No, that was not practice. How can you tell? Oh, terrible. <laughs> Pick a note, any note, and see if you can harmonize to it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Marla, that was special for you when you watched this video. <laughs> Oh, I to, well, I will tell one funny story on Audrey and I. When we had the cottages here, we were constantly in cookbooks and cooking magazines and what have you, just getting inspiration and seeing what amazing things we could cook up for the ladies. Well, hopefully amazing anyways. And 
<laughs> so we would sit here in this commercial kitchen and we would look, pour over all these magazines and books. Well, one weekend we had the High Prairie Quilt Guild come <clears throat> for a retreat and they were upstairs doing their thing and it was Friday night. I'm pretty sure it was Friday night. And we had, were doing snacks later in the evening once everybody arrived. They were leaving, they were leaving, get ready to leave. There was people here at the house. It was High Prairie Quilt Guild. <laughs> This is what we regularly do. One can't remember, the other one remembers. So anyways, the people were here, and we're sitting on the floor. I don't know why we decided to sit on the floor. Have no idea what ever possessed us, but we sat on the floor, and we're looking at these magazines, and somehow we started singing. I don't know if the radio was going, or if we just started practicing, singing. Practicing I don't know. songs for something. We were practicing songs for something. I don't know what, what we were singing. And... We were not listening very carefully to hear to hear if anybody was coming down the stairs. Well, down comes Marla down the okay. stairs and Kareem and popped in around the corner. And there we are sitting on the floor with these cookbooks singing. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is not um, something that you want to do when you're trying to appear that you're fairly professional. And, <laughs> and you know what you're doing. To find the cook sitting on the floor in the kitchen singing and looking at cookbooks. There we go. Told the funny story to me. Marla and Kareen, they were involved in that one. Good morning, Karen. And Diane. Diane, welcome. <clears throat> you missed all the, the excitement. Well, yeah, the excitement. You can rewatch it later if you really feel the need for that. So, yeah, dream pie. There it is. Blueberry, blueberries and blue jello and whipping cream. Pearl. And then you're going to... And it's Pearl. Good morning, Pearl. Good morning, Diane. <clears throat> and see. you're gonna have this beautiful pie and you can make it for Canada Day. Pearl, you could make this pie easy and your family would love oh, this. Karen. Good morning, Karen. I can't see. And Diane. She's a lot of you said friend. Yep. Audrey can't see. <laughs> okay, so I think we've talked about all the pie things <laughs> that we're gonna do or have done. So that ends the month of pies in honor of our dad who loved pie this was the last one this is the blueberry dream pie i'm going to make cherry pies today yet i've got the fire the filling made up and it's cooling a little bit before i make up the pies audrey is going to make strawberry pie and dig potatoes i'm going to do other mundane tasks like cleaning that's what's the one for the rest of today i might get a little bit of quilting done if i don't power out before the end of the day so Thanks for joining us. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Have a beautiful celebration of July 1st tomorrow. I think everybody, everybody pretty much has the day off. There's a few people that will be working for sure, but have yourself a very beautiful day. I'm gonna put a plug in for the High Prairie Quilt Guild Quilt Show that is going to be happening in High Prairie tomorrow from 10 until 5 Unless at St. Anthony's School. Gets rained out. Now, if you need to know for sure whether or not the quilt show is happening or not, you can watch my Facebook page or you can check out the High Parade Quilt Guild page. We'll be popping it up there if the weather turns nasty. They're supposed to get 10 to 20 millimeters of, of rain and that doesn't sit very well for doing a quilt show but so far looks like we're going ahead with it so if you need something to do for the day and you're up for a little bit of a drive for anybody that's not local to high prairie go to the high prairie quilt guild quilts around the block it's called because they're going to be hanging outside on the fence so you get to be outside you're not going to be inside it will be outside so uh, wear some walking shoes and and come and check out the quilts that are going to be there tomorrow. Any questions, Zachary? We get to go. No questions. Okay. Lots of comments. Okay. No questions, but lots of comments. So thanks everyone for joining us and we will see you next month. Well, I will see you next month. Not Me. sure. <laughs> because I'm going to be making <laughs> seafood lasagna. Yes, seafood lasagna is going to be the first one I'm going to make. And then it won't be every week that I'll be doing cooking things. And then a couple weeks later, I'm going to do butter chicken. So those are my recipes for the month of July that I am going to attempt and hopefully you're supposed to make um, turn out. cream puffs. And then Audrey said I have to make cream puffs, so I might need to build up my 
um, courage and practice for cream puffs and do that in August. We'll make some cream puffs in August. So here we go. I think I've told you all the things and wished you well. So we're going to sign off now. And thanks for joining us.